What we want to show next is anywhere we have the styrofoam that has an, a gap in it that's not tight, what we need to do is we need to fill those. If we don't, what happens, the base coat will actually ooze into the crack, causing a solid spot and possibly forming a crack through the finish or leaving a thermal barrier gap where we have the thermal uh, penetration coming through. So to do this, it's very easily done. We just take a piece of the same styrofoam. We used before. This is basically just called a shim or a sliver. Slip that in. It's just a very thin piece of foam and that just slides right inside that crack. And all that does is just creates a filler. Just to make sure that the gaps are completely full of styrofoam. Is to use a, a spray type foam, a gap filler, a non expandable, <coughs> excuse me, low expanding foam. And at that point, what we do is we just take and we can run that foam directly in that crack like that. What we're going to do now is put a decorative band, a decorative band, or a detail band around the window. You can put these basically anywhere you'd like. You can put a, a base on the bottom. Uh, you can do a detail around the window, through the middle, anywhere you'd like to have a decorative band. It's done very easily just by applying another piece of foam. Anytime we have a horizontal or anything running in a horizontal fashion, we want to make this sure that we have a water table on this. What this is is a sloped on top. Basically, so the water, any type of moisture, anything hits the, hits the wall, will come down and run off the top of it, so it won't pond on the top. This needs to be close to about a 12 degree angle. Um, it's basically put on the bottom or the base of any window and also at the top of any window, so the moisture down rolls off the wall. We'll just apply that to the back of the band. fashion just like that. And then measuring that off, we'll slide that out to where that's going to meet this outside band. You can take a screw or a nail and just pin that in until that spray foam sets. There again, we're going to hold that away from that window frame about three-eighths to a half of an inch, just like we have the base foam on there. Make sure that we have room for a sealant, a back rod and sealant in there. What we need <clears throat> to do at this point, we'll take a rasp. A rasp is basically a large sanding device. It's got a very coarse aggregate on one side of it with a handle. We're going to take the styrofoam. We're going to smooth the styrofoam out to a completely smooth surface. We're going to make sure the edges are square and true, and the, the joints are flush, and then the wall is completely sanded. This is done very easily. We'll just take this the rasp. making sure the edges are straight. The wall area is the same process. We're going to do is going to wrap the joints. <clears throat> you 
You can tell the low spots from the high spots. Where you get a high spot, it will show a rasp mark readily, and then in a low spot, you'll see where the styrofoam is not touched by the rasp. What we need to do is bring this point to this point. So we'll continue to rasp that down. making sure that we have a completely smooth surface. After the rasping process is done, what you want to do is the wind locks. Remember, we put those in and we countersunk those in just beyond the face of the foam. What we're going to do is we're going to take the base coat, T2000 or foam base adhesive. We're going to just spot those wind locks. We want to fill those up to the point where they're flush with the foam. If you don't do this process, what will happen is the base coat will actually shrink back as you put the fiberglass mesh on and that will show in the finish. So you want to make sure that this is done completely. What we're going to do now is we're going to embed the back wrap or the fiberglass mesh into the base coat. Remember, we put the fiberglass mesh, stapled it to the wall, put the styrofoam on top. That way we can pull that directly around. There again, we're taking the base coat completely back behind the window casing. Remember, we've held that styrofoam down and away from that casing, the window casing, about 3 8 to a half an inch causing a gap between the base coat and the window. With that, we can run the base coat back in behind the window frame, making sure that we have that fiberglass mesh completely encased in the base coat. If you need to put a little bit of base coat on top of the fiberglass, because you've got a few spots showing, that's no problem. With this piece, we're going to run this beyond the outside of the edge. Remember again, our fiberglass is down to here. I'm going to lap that more than two and a half inches. I'm going to wrap that beyond. There again, I'm going to tighten that up and make sure I pull that into the corners. There again, cutting the corners, just trimming the outside edges, out, outer corners, and the inside corner. That way I can take that piece, wrap that up the wall. That wraps that corner, this piece around, and wraps that corner. That way we make sure that we have the corners completely wrapped with fiberglass mesh and base coat. What we're going to do on these corners is this is called a butterfly. What, we're, what we need to do on every corner to keep that from cracking is we'll take this butterfly and trowel that directly into that. Simply wrapping that corner. What that does is gives us a reinforcement on that corner to keep that from cracking. 
on the inside corner. We'll just take a small piece, lay that inside the corner, making sure that we get back beyond the face of the window frame, cutting the outside corner. Pulling that around that outside edge. That way we have a complete wrap on the corner. They actually make different tools, different corner tools to you run on the outside corner. But you can run that down like that. Run your outside corners, making them perfectly square and flat. At this point, what we're going to do is burn the entire fiberglass mesh on the, on the styrofoam wall. We're going to take the base coat. Spreading that up, we've pre-cut our fiberglass mesh to fit in an area. Uh, especially if you're working in direct sun or the heat of the day, you're going to want to uh, pre-cut your mesh. Make sure that you have the right size of mesh to fit the area because this base coat will set up rather quickly in the sun. At that point, what we're going to do is we're going to take the fiberglass mesh and we'll start at the bottom, keeping it flush with the bottom starter track. As you trowel that in, what you want to do is basically trowel it from the inside out to get rid of the wrinkles. This process, what we're doing is we're just troweling the fiberglass right into the base coat, making sure that the mud pulls back through the base coat. If you get to where you're a little bit shy on the base coat, you can take a little more and put over the top of it, just to make sure we have the mesh completely embedded in the base coat. What we're going to do is we're going to put on an armor mesh for all your lower areas. A lot of times architects will call for a, a high impact mesh. This is done basically the same way. We're going to take the base coat, spread directly onto the wall. There again, making sure that the fiberglass is completely embedded with the base coat. What we're going to do is we'll take that and put that directly onto the wall. Again, troweling that in. You have to remember when you use the heavier mesh, it takes a lot more base coat. Again, making sure that we have the mesh completely encased with the base coat. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take and spread another coat, a base on the top of this, just a light coat. We're going to take a four ounce mesh and lay right over the top of this again. Again, we'll trowel the base coat right up through the mesh. 